I'm Carla. And I'm Keys. And, and we're, we're the, the History, History Twins. Twins. Welcome to our podcast, where history is more than just dates and dead people. Join us each episode as we explore the past through music and story. So, who are we talking about today? Oh, today we are talking about Peggy Shippen. And who is Peggy Shippen? Peggy Shippen is the wife of... General Benedict Arnold, mm-hmm. and when so this this week's song is a woman's wiles mm-hmm. from our show this man's a spy. Right. You know every week we have been uh, we have been focusing on a particular song. So this song is like the showcase for the showstopper for Peggy Shippen, mm-hmm. and I love this story on so many different levels. Not just because I sing the song. But because this story, while we were researching it and putting the song together and, and writing it, there were so many different layers to the story. So the thing about Peggy Shippen, well, let, let's back up a second. So we are talking about the Benedict Arnold, the, the American General Benedict Arnold and the British Major John Andre. Right. And the whole Revolutionary War plot was that Benedict Arnold was in charge of West Point. That's correct. And he was selling off the plant to West Point Mm -hmm. to John Andre. Of the British Army. Of the British Army. Mm -hmm. So when people hear about the story, they usually hear about General Benedict Arnold and and don't be a Benedict Arnold. And that's like one of the worst things you could call someone. And, Mm -hmm. you know, in early episodes, we we talked uh, about him. But a lot of people don't know the part that his wife, that Benedict Arnold's wife, Peggy Shippen, played in this whole plot. And learning that was so, so... Awesome. So let me back up a little bit and talk a little bit about her. Mm -hmm. So Peggy, her real name was like Margaret Peggy, nickname Shippen. She was the daughter of Edward Shippen, who was a Philadelphia lawyer. And she was accustomed to the upper class. It was Mm -hmm. a wealthy family. So Mm -hmm. she had, you know, the high society. And let's see, they lived in Philadelphia. And there was a point where... Now, also, their family was said to be loyal to the crown, loyal to the British crown. And so this they is, were loyalists. Right. But I've been reading different sources that also call, refer to them as neutralists, mm. meaning uh, they might not have been outwardly loyal to the crown, but they definitely had a distaste to the patriots, you know, the, the, of the, the colonials mm-hmm. in, in yeah. the colony. Yeah. Uh, they had a distaste for all of the fighting and all of the stuff that they mm-hmm. were trying to do. So they were sort of on the fence. They were American. They were born here, but they definitely had, they could benefit a lot. Cause like, what were yeah. you saying well, about? Well, I was saying that they were probably trying to see which side was going to win. So yes. they didn't want to make too much noise one way or another because you don't want to be on the wrong side of that coin. Yes. So they could have been loyalists and, and really meant that they were loyal to the crown, but they might not want to make so much noise about that just in case things just, didn't go that way. Just in case. Mm-hmm. That's true. And and as you often remind me, America wasn't America then. Right. You know, we, it wasn't official. And it was a group of colonies. It was a group of colonies. Mm-hmm. So it could have gone e- either way, you know. So Peggy Shippen was... So at one point... The British had control over Philadelphia. That's right. And they had all of these different, well, the officers were there, and they had parties and all kind of balls and whatnot, and she was like the most eligible woman there, young woman. How old was she? She was only 18. 18. Well, actually, she was 18 when she got married, so that means she was even younger when she was Mm -hmm. inviting, you know, when she was attracting, shall we say, the attentions of, of many men, and she was believed to be the most, uh, in many different accounts, say that she was probably the most attractive or the most beautiful, beautiful, highly eligible mm-hmm. uh, young woman in Philadelphia society. And, you know, it doesn't hurt that that she was wealthy, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, there you know. is that minor detail. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, while the British were there, having, you know, and, and her family, they were loyalists, 
she would attend all the bell, all, all the balls, and she was the bell of the ball, mm-hmm. literally. Mm-hmm. And this is where she met John Andre. Oh. Yes. And it is believed that they may have courted. Mm-hmm. There's not there's not necessarily a lot of proof on this. If you watch the the turn the, what, what the was AMC it was series. the AMC series turn, turn. Mm-hmm. it's yep. about like George Washington spies. There is definitely this Peggy Shippen uh, Peggy John Shippen Andre. John Andre romance. romance plot going on, mm-hmm. and that's very titillating. But yeah, when, they really played that up. They they really but did. We don't know for sure. Yeah, but when I looked through, when I looked for different um, sources sources and primary documents, there was really nothing there. But um, John Andre was a very charming guy. So he was, he, she wasn't the only one that he had, you know, he was like a little bee and there are all these beautiful flowers Mm -hmm. in Philadelphia and she was maybe the main one that he was flitting around, but he was flitting around with other people. Ah. But also like there was this uh, Turkish ball. There was this Mm -hmm. one report of this Turkish ball and he was a bit of a dandy, but you know, he was also very creative. He Mm, was artsy, he was a poet, he was a musician. Mm -hmm. He designed some kind of Turkish costume for Peggy Shippen. Oh, wow. Which is so, you know, which is, which is another story, but it's very interesting, but still, you know, they're not, they weren't dating or anything. Supposedly, allegedly, reportedly. Supposedly, allegedly. Scuttlebutt was. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we're just establishing right now that they had, they knew each other. Right. Now, at some point though, the Americans took over Philadelphia That's and the British had to get out. They mm-hmm. had to skedaddle. It was time to go. It was time to go. So when this happened, oh, this was after the Battle of Saratoga when General Benedict Arnold was injured, right? And wounded. And wounded. He, always... he got both of them. Because, yes. Cause yeah. Oh, tell the, me. Yeah. Tell me that. His horse was shot out from under him mm-hmm. and he broke his leg and he was also shot in that leg. Yes. And tell and me the had difference. Been well, the, the difference between injured and wounded is a wound is a result of a weapon mm. or can be wounded yeah. and uh, an injury is as a result of an accident. So he had so, both. Yeah, he had both. I mean, I suppose you could call having a broken leg from your horse falling on you <laughs> after it's been shot. Uh, it's kind of a gray area whether it's going to be a wound or an arrow or an injury, but either way. And he had already been shot in that leg in Quebec. Yes. So this this was not good news for that leg. No, no, mm-hmm. not at all. So that was the Battle of Saratoga, and this is General Benedict Arnold, and he was, but he was this hero. He was this war hero, and aside from all of the other stuff that happened, he it was his time to heal. Now yeah. it was time for him to heal because he definitely was not going to be on any other horses or anything. So George Washington sent Benedict Arnold to Philadelphia to be the military governor. Correct. Yeah. So Benedict Arnold gets to Philadelphia, and who does he see? Who could he not miss <laughs> but Miss Peggy Shippen? The one. The one, the only. Uh, the socialite. Mm-hmm. The bell of the ball. And he courted her. He wanted to court her. And I think first, at first, her father, Peggy Shippen's father, Edward Shippen, he wasn't crazy about the idea. Well, especially if he was a loyalist. Exactly. An American general. Yeah. yeah it's hard to look cool when that happens. Yeah. But it's but, also an excellent disguise. No, exactly. But it's also hard to look cool if you're like, well, no, you can't marry. Why? Well, why can't I marry your daughter? What? Why are you, you mm-hmm. know, because he really, they can't win when you think about it. That's true. So they decided to, uh, to let this marriage go through and uh, they got married. So, and how old was was General Arnold? He was, I think he was 36, although I read somewhere he was 39. So he was in his late 30s, probably Mm -hmm. he was about twice her age. And she was 18. 18. 18. So they get married. Now, what we had been saying previously about General Benedict Arnold was that he was disgruntled because of the experiences he he'd been having. Like he had just uh, had this, I mean, this the the one of the results of the battles of Saratoga is that the French came in. Right. It was a decisive victory against the English, and um, and uh, he he was not given any credit, yes. official credit for the the role he had played in this battle. That's right. Not to mention he had been passed over. Um, also, for promotion, yeah. Right, he'd been passed over for promotion. And then in Philadelphia, the people there were not giving him, it was like a, like the Continental Congress as well as like the executive 
council. Like there were people who were kind of out to get him. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember like one of the one of his enemies, you know, was saying, well, he t- he's taking a lot of he- he's taking a carriage everywhere. Well, what did we just say? He the was the guy who had his horse shot out from under him, broke his leg, was shot in the leg, the same leg he'd been shot in back at Quebec. Yeah, I so can see course. why you might want to take care yeah, of his Yeah, but you know, they're like, no, 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 he's he's misusing the funds because he's taking carriages anywhere. Mm-hmm. So all of this happens, and these charges are brought against him for mismanagement of funds, and profiteering for profiteering. Mm-hmm. Now he is absolved. Like his, I mean, the charges were cleared. However, the the Continental Congress still made, or they kind of forced. George Washington to reprimand him publicly, to reprimand, reprimand Arnold. Arnold publicly. Mm-hmm. And up until this point, Arnold thought that, that General Washington was his, you know, like had his back. He thought that, that you know, this is, he believes in me. And well, he had. Well, Washington uh, had called Arnold his fighting general. Ah, see? Yeah, so now yeah. all of a sudden, he's sort of like, now George Washington is turning on him, and it's just not cute. So all of these little, these slights are adding up, and Arnold is tired of the war. He wants this thing to be over. So what does he do? He starts plotting. He's like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of this war. I'm tired of people not respecting me. I think... The British will be a better choice for me. I think they'll they'll understand me. They'll get me because mm-hmm. you know these Americans, these these co- colonial people, they just they just don't get me. Mm-hmm. So um, so he marries. So Benedict Arnold marries Peggy Shippen, mm-hmm. and all and also during this time while he is military governor, his leg is healing. That's right. So instead of looking for another battle or saying, okay, I'm ready for another command, you know, put me in coach. Instead, he has a plan. Mm -hmm. Benedict Arnold has a plan. So a month after, just a month after getting married to Peggy Shippen, he reaches out to the British side and he offers his services. Ah. Yes, mm-hmm. through a Joseph Stansberry, mm-hmm. who works with, uh, who was like an aide to Sir Henry Clinton. The British general. The British general Clinton, mm-hmm. exactly. So, at this time, Arnold is lobbying with George Washington to say, you know what, I think maybe my days of being... Uh, you know, a war a field battle general mm-hmm. may be done. So you know what? How about you put me in charge of that West Point spot at the Hudson Highlands? Mm-hmm. You know, and and in New York. In New York, you know, we talk about why that was a strategic location, and it was this fort, and and Washington had no idea that that Benedict Arnold was scheming, so. He said, you know what, I think that's a good idea. You should be general at at this fort. And also and, and what was the fort called at that time? It was originally called Fort Arnold. Named they after would him. name the fort after the first general that was in command of it. So it was Fort Arnold. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know that. They, I didn't know that. Well, but the funny thing is when I'm looking at these documents, I noticed that Arnold himself never returned, re- referred to it as Fort Arnold. And maybe he wouldn't because it's his name. But I think he n- already knew going into it that he wasn't going to claim ownership of it because he knew he was going to give it up. It's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, well, he did. I mean, like, I mean, a month, he, yeah. you know, he knew he was. So I feel like, because I'm thinking me, if I was, if this was going to be like Fort Carla, I'd be really less inclined to want to give it up because it's got my name. It because you know it's got my name on it that means mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. so you know like what does all this have to do with peggy shipping okay so for one thing whether she whether or not peggy shipping convinced him to to make any changes you know to to change allegiance she's still like this beautiful woman who's mm-hmm. you know who's who's the, the, that siren song of oh I just want to settle down and just you know forget mm-hmm. this war thing and mm-hmm. and you know want to stay and make babies or whatever I, I don't whatever no I don't know what he was thinking I'm just you know speculating here so 
how did how did these letters how did this connect this communication happen between Benedict Arnold and John Andre? Yeah, how did it happen? Peggy Shippen. Uh. Yes. So, uh, and the other part that I, that I like to joke about is that it wasn't realized until about the 1930s or maybe even the 1940s, 1940s, that Peggy Shippen was even involved. Wow. And that's because she was a woman. Mm-hmm. Like people don't people don't think that a woman has any agency or thought to do these kind of things. Well, they didn't. I mean, it's a little different now. They did then, they do now. But the thing is people didn't expect no, I meant it. No, people oh. didn't think that then. Oh, 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 no, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, don't don't get me all fired up and stuff. Here we go. I know like, oh, just here she to be clear. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm just going to go over here. <laughs> No problem. You're safe. You're safe. So, I just love. I mean, I love the, as a, as a as a woman from the. What is this? Is this the 21st century now? Yes, baby. It's yeah. The 21st okay. Century. Yeah. So to be a 21st century woman and to say, "Ha ha! You should have known better," you know. But they did not realize until the 1930s, 1940s that she was deep into it. So what she was doing, dear listeners. There were these letters passed between General Benedict Arnold going to John Andre. John Andre. And what they would be, they'd be these little letters, you know, maybe talking, these little harmless looking letters written by written by Peggy. Peggy, thank you. And there would be code written in invisible ink, like in between the lines. And what was the code? How'd that work? Oh, the code was Let's see. The code was it was invisible ink, and they were with a book. Let's see. Let me see so my notes here. John uh, John Andre mm-hmm. and Peggy Shippen had the same book. Yes, yes. It was like Blackstone's Some Rule of Law, Rule of England. Law, something like mm-hmm. that. Some really boring book, but they both had it. And and describe it again. How they would. So the, it was a s- s- system of numbers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and if the first number would be the page number, mm-hmm. and then the second would be how many words in, mm-hmm. and how many lines up was the third. Right. And so it was all numeric. Eric, and she would go through it word number by number and mm-hmm. decode the letter and then encode one back yes. in invisible ink all between the lines of these oh it's you know the weather's been lovely letters mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then but the other thing I, I learned was that these letters would just be passed between one loyalist friend to another mm-hmm. so she had a whole network of friends so it would just be something really innocuous looking you know we said about the weather and oh this is what we're doing this spring and blah 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 and then she'd pass it to one friend who'd pass it to another friend and then pass it to another friend and eventually it would get to John Andre in on the British side and so they went back and forth and these are the letters that were used to plot that fateful meeting that in-person meeting mm-hmm. between Major Andre and Benedict. and Benedict Arnold. Mm-hmm. So, dun, 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 dun. so no one really knows about that until now. So, um, let's see. And you know, mm-hmm. if you if you, again, we'll, we'll refer back to that AMC TV show Spy, uh, Spy Turn. 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 Um, they really played up her her end of this as well. Oh, yeah. they totally yeah. did. Totally did. I mean, it's definitely very Hollywood, but you know. And also, you know, very, very salacious and sexy. But, you know, that's what gets people to watch. Mm-hmm. So the whole idea behind the song, A Woman's Wild, is about Peggy Shippen. And it's about how she used her feminine wiles to fool the men. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, let's talk about what men she fooled. Oh, you know, after mm-hmm. after Benedict Arnold's plot was revealed, after yes. Andre was captured and Benedict escaped, mm-hmm. she came. She was visited by. Mm, she was visited by Alexander Hamilton and George Washington. Yes, and George Washington, and she met them at the door. Well, actually, there was a, another part of it because apparently the both they were both home mm-hmm. from 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 uh, according to one report. Benedict Arnold and both, it was like morning. Mm-hmm. Peggy, um, and, Penny Peggy, and Be- Peggy and Benedict. Peggy and Benedict were home mm-hmm. and she had, you know, they had their baby. Uh, she had a, well, you know, their son. son. I think their son James, I think was his name. Anyway, um, 
Alexander Hamilton and George Washington came over to Benedict's house for an, uh, for breakfast. It wasn't mm-hmm. even related to anything just yet. Well, they were going to review the fort, see what things were like. Oh, right, yeah. right. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And then while that was going on, someone came over and passed a message to... George Washington. No, no, no. No? Was it George Washington? Oh, maybe it was George Washington. And Mm -hmm. and it said um, something about John Anderson. Right. Which was the alias for John Andre. Right. And when Benedict Arnold heard that name, that he's the one that given that name to John Mm -hmm. Andre, he knew the jig was up. So... So so he escaped. Yes, but what he did first, Benedict Arnold supposedly, allegedly, reportedly, he went upstairs or he went to Peggy. We don't know what they said, but he said mm-hmm. something to her, and then he flew the coop. And he's like, oh, I got to go. I have to go to the thing. I have to go. I have urgent business. I have at the, urgent at the business shore, at yeah. West Point or something like that, yeah. or I have urgent business. And he, and he basically left them there. With, with Peggy. Yeah, and then he got on the Vulture, the same ship that was yes. supposed to take Andre back. Yes. And was taken back to British-held New York City on Safely. the same ship that uh, Andre Safely. was supposed to have been on. Yes, mm-hmm. but while George Washington and Alexander Hamilton are there, because Benedict Arnold must have given her the scoop, he must have mm-hmm. given Peggy, you know, a little, like, hey, you know, stall for me. She had this big moment where she's like, she had this hysterical thing like, oh, you're trying to kill my baby. She had a hysterical histrionics, they were calling mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And there, there's a letter that, um, if you check with the show notes, I have a letter. There, there's a letter written by Alexander Hamilton and how, how upset he was to see Peggy Shippen so upset. Mm-hmm. Like, he was so moved by her tears and, and everything. And, and he was like, oh, I've never seen anything like this and blah, blah, blah. And if you've seen Hamilton, you see, okay, you've seen, the, you know, you've seen the musical Hamilton. You, we've already, you know, Hamilton has already proved himself to be really not that bright when it comes to, susceptible to the damsel in distress mm-hmm. story. So, sure enough, um, they bought it and then the next day they went back to visit her and she saw them from her bed and she was just you know she was like a little more calm or whatever but she was a behind, she she knew what she was doing and they were like oh so then tell me about that oh yeah, yeah. so and you know not long afterwards uh benedict arnold wrote a letter to george washington mm-hmm. saying you know my wife is completely innocent she is an angel in all of this angel and please send send her safely to wherever she wishes to go, whether it's Philadelphia or New York. Yes. So speaking of, she went to Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. She went to Philadelphia to spend this time with her family. However, while Peggy was in Philadelphia visiting her family, a letter was found that was sent from Andre to her. Mm-hmm. And that's when it was revealed that she might have known something was going on. But even then, the powers that be thought, well, she's just doing what her husband said. Like, she still didn't have any kind of thought of her own. But they still had to banish her, and she was made, she was, you know, not really, she couldn't stay. Right. So her father had to escort her back to New York City. Which was then held by the British. Yes, so she could be with her husband. So, she, so but, af- but that was after they found out that there was this letter that mm-hmm. was involved. So... That was, uh, you know, so, so she was still playing that innocent wife. Right. Um, now, there's a whole bunch of other little cool things that I have to mention. Um, so, let's see. They go to, they're in, they're in New York and they are doing their thing. Or they're, and, and what's his name? Benedict, which one? Benedict Arnold. These names, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Benedict Arnold is off doing his thing. And... So at one point, after the war was over, 1789, was it over then, 1789? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she returned to visit her family in Philadelphia again. But this time, she was made very unwelcome and she had to leave right away. Yeah. Like like she Mm -hmm. wasn't even, you know, they're just like, "Eh," you know, you're a traitor's wife, you gotta go. Um, But also, another interesting story that happened on her way, before she had to leave, 
um, she stopped to visit the Burrs. Now, mm-hmm. oh, Aaron, Aaron Burr. Burr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, he was married to Theodosia Prevost, mm-hmm. who was originally married to a British soldier. Officer. Officer, excuse me. And he died. After he died, mm-hmm. uh, she married Burr. Right. Now, it is there's in Aaron Burr's memoirs, he recounts a story where his wife recalled that Peggy opened up to her friend Theodosia because they were mm-hmm. friends. Because mm-hmm. they were all remember they were all like loyalists, so they they were in cahoots, as my mom would say. So she stopped to visit her friend Theodosia on her way back, and she said, "Let's see." She said that she was disgusted with the American cause and through unceasing perseverance, she, um, she was basically involved in getting, um, getting Benedict Arnold to, you know, to, to, to give up West Point. Yeah. To give up West Point, you know, at least, at least to be involved. Mm-hmm. So, um, so here it is, Theodosia tells her husband, Aaron Burr, that she had, that she had actually, that, that she confessed to it. That but Peggy the, confessed. Yeah, yeah that Peggy confessed. But the, 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 the memoirs that Burr wrote this in, mm-hmm. it didn't come out until, everybody after, was dead. until after everybody was dead. Mm-hmm. But when it came out, Peggy's family was like, oh, no, that, that's not what happened. Their thought, their, what, what they said, they countered that this was, they countered with allegations of improper behavior on Burr's part. Mm-hmm. They claim that Burr rode with Peggy in a carriage to Philadelphia after she left with Mrs. Prevost, mm-hmm. and, and that, that he fabricated that allegation because she refused advances that he made during the ride. Mm. Now, one Arnold biographer says that Burr's version is, at, is probably more authentic because for one thing, this, this account didn't come up until after everybody was dead. Right. Like he had nothing to, to gain. There was nothing to gain. Mm-hmm. And the other part was Burr was not in the carriage. So that couldn't have happened. Minor detail. Minor, minor detail. So she did at least, supposedly, allegedly, reportedly, Peggy did have some kind of gleeful recounting of her part that she did share that we have some kind of some kind of accounting of. It's right, still right. hearsay, but it's still quite salacious. Mm-hmm. So um, There's so many different accounts that we've read and seen, heard. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And um, let's see. And it, and in 1941, that's when Carl Van Doren published these papers that came from the headquarters of Sir Henry Clinton, British mm-hmm. s- Sir, British. <laughs> Sir Henry Clinton. Mm-hmm. And within those published papers, Andre has a careful record of his interview with Stansberry, who was the his go-between, his liaison between um, himself and... Um, and and general clinton so there's there's like a there's an account where he's talking about well i'm talking to mrs peggy chu but i'm really talking to someone else and of course we've also figured out that peggy chu was peggy shipping Ah. yeah so there's that and what else what else do i have um uh we have the allegations we have yeah so she was she's in the thick of it she Mm -hmm. she was totally totally in it and uh she was like this the innocent angel ha oh oh another thing in 1782 peggy we found out also later Mm -hmm. peggy was gifted an annual pension of 500 pounds by king george the third and quote obtained for her services which were very meritorious, end quote. Mm. And per uh, Wikipedia, or the sources from there, it says she was, Peggy Shippen, was the highest paid spy in the American Revolution. Wow. So if you connect the dots from all these different sources, mm. I mean, if at the very least, King George III paying her for her services. Yeah, he thought something was up. Yeah, I think so. I yeah, think definitely, so. Definitely. So, um, and also just to get to the musical part of mm-hmm. the song, um, I love how you added like the harpsichord, like 
Thank you. Well, let's talk about how the song itself. Oh, sure. You know, the, the idea is we put this song together about a woman's wiles, and, you know, we kind of decided it should be a sort of a Mae West feel to it. Mm-hmm, so we mm-hmm. did that. But we wanted it to be, or I wanted it to have a, a, a colonial 18th century feel. Yeah, and you know what? Let, let's play it right now. Let's, let's play it okay. now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Back when I was just a girl at my daddy's knee learn that there are ways to get anything I please. Just a little pouting, just a little tear, whatever I desired was given to me here. Now Benedict's a good man, but can he provide the luxuries a woman needs at this stage in her life? John Andre, he's got power and his rank is high. I'm sure he would pay dearly to have Arnold on his side. But how to make this happen? How to make this so? Men have done my bidding every single one I know. This whole world is run by men But I can tell you they better think again All that bravado and all their strength Are no match for a woman's wives Are no match for a woman's wives They say in the household the man's the head they have no idea it's someone else instead Everyone knows that the neck turns the head And so does a woman's wives And so does a woman's wives With all their ruling, they're just fooling Themselves into thinking they're in charge But they stop thinking once we start winking And soon they'll be doing what we wanted from the start So take this tip from a woman who knows It's easy leading a man by the nose A little perfume and all the right clothes They're falling for a woman's wiles They're falling for a woman's wiles Fun. That was that was that was great fun. So that harpsichord you were saying it's I, I like it because it's sort of like the delicate femininity mm-hmm. that haha delicate in, in in air quotes of course. Um, and we also use a harpsichord in was it Here Comes the General? And here Comes the General, right? Where we're introducing Benedict Arnold and Peggy Shippen. When Peggy Shippen's part of the song came up, we had her introduced with a harpsichord. I love that. I love that version. I mean, I just, I just love how you transition and we're like, oh, we're talking about Peggy Shippen now. And then also, um, when we were writing A Woman's Wiles, like you had done like the bulk of it, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, you know, it's not finished. And then we came up with the idea of adding an A section, sort of like an introduction exactly, yeah. to, to talk about, to sort of reflect that mm-hmm. This is nothing new for Peggy Shipman. Like, right. like just to reflect that her ability to control or manipulate men happened since she was a young girl. Like, she's been doing this for a really long time, you know. Back when I was just a girl at my daddy's knee, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and that idea that she's been charming men since she was a very little girl. And now here she is. She is in the fullness of her beauty. And she can make men do whatever she wants them to. And, and now Benedict Arnold, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I just, I love that song. And, and thank you so much for, you know, for, well, co-writing it, co- yeah, co-composing sure. it. Because... Mm-hmm. Um, it just I, I just think it's just one of those moments where we get to really reflect on a particular character's 
version of a story or, or how her contribution mm-hmm. um, became so much greater than people expected. Yeah, yeah. And also just just remind her not to take advantage. I mean, or, or not to take advantage. Don't, don't underestimate. Don't That's underestimate it. women or anyone because you just, you never know, you never know. what people have mm-hmm. up their sleeves. Mm-hmm. So um, I think... I, I think I've said all I want to say yeah, about Peggy Shippen. Yeah, I think so too. So now that you know, you know. <laughs>